Hey guys, today we got a Datsun 510. We're going to be doing an exterior wash, decontamination, polish, and a graphene coating. Hey Joe, it might look like it's gonna. It might rain or not. Uh, I don't. I think the chances are very slim. You know, last night we got we got some showers, but I think we I think we're good for the rest of the day. So right now you're doing an interior and exterior on this car. How would the rain affect your job right now? Let's just say it started raining. What would you do? Cancel so, or? So, yeah, if it's raining, depending on how much rain we're getting, you know, obviously I have a generator. The generator is covered. I have electrical um, equipment out here. Obviously that stuff would be packed away. I wouldn't be using that. If I'm doing the interior, you're gonna have to resort to doing manual, you know, cleaning. So we're talking pulling out the brushes, we're talking about pulling out the, the carpet cleaner, doing everything by hand. Like there's no, I wouldn't have any machines, I wouldn't have my steamer, I wouldn't have, uh, I can use compressed air because there's no electricity um, being used on that guy that's battery powered. Um, and you're just pulling the hose out, the only thing that would be uh, exposed is the hose. But um, yeah, for the most part, the interior I would be able to knock out with no problem. The exterior, what I, what I usually do is, if I know that the rain's coming and going, or I know it's only gonna rain for a short amount of time, what I'll do is I'll do certain part of the, the vehicle first. I'll look at the, the overcast, and I'll look, you know, check on my phone to see exactly what time we're looking at rain. Maybe I'll take a short break at that time, return, do the exterior, finish it up, or we can reschedule for another day. Uh, some detailers will say, oh, if it rains, within the next week, we'll get you back for free. I don't really do that. You know, it's, it's, you know, I don't like working twice. And um, if the client does want to cancel, I'm always willing to accommodate another day um, for them. But um, sometimes I'll make an exception if they, you know, if they, if the, if the chances of the rain are very, very slim, I'll say, okay, if it does happen to rain, I'll just give it a quick wipe down or I'll come back, do a rinseless wash on it just to get, just to make sure you're good for the rest of the month. But um, this vehicle here is just exterior today. So we don't have to worry about the interior. He just received this vehicle. He just purchased it. It's a car he's wanted for over 20 years. So uh, we're gonna take care of it today. Dotson 510. All right, man. So, do you're about to try something that I've never heard other detailers do. You're gonna test the paint? Yes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick evaluation of the paint before I actually put a, apply any soap to it or water to see if this guy's gonna need a clay bar. So uh, you have to do this. Some people use the, the, the plastic, uh, the bag method where you put it into the, the plastic, clear plastic bag and you can kind of like the sandwich bag and you can kind of fill the grit. What I do is I just use rinseless wash in my hand. If you feel any embedded contaminants and you feel like it needs to be clay barred, that's when you, you know, you'll make sure that you have your clay bar and everything ready. So when you have it soaked up, you can actually clay as you're, as you're washing at the same time, kind of knock out two birds with one stone. But right now I'm just gonna test to see it, even if it needs a clay bar. Not sure how long the, the vehicle has been painted. I'm not sure what kind of condition it's been, um, it's been uh, stored in, you know, if it was garaged outside. So we're gonna test to see right now. I'm gonna test the top surfaces. Those are the areas that get the most fallout and that generally need the most clay. The sides you usually don't. The flat, top flat panels is where most of the uh, contamination tends to fall. Rinseless wash, see my towel. Like butter. Yeah? Yeah, we're good, we're good. So, so wait, how would you know if you're not good? If you feel a little rocks or something? It's gonna be gritty. It'll be very gritty. It'll feel, uh, it'll feel almost like overspray. Like a very, very light, uh, very light grit, so. Yeah, all top surfaces seem to be well. So it looks like uh, we're just gonna have to, we're gonna wash it. I'll, I'll hit it with the, uh, with the industrial fallout remover. I'm gonna give it, a, give it a, a, a good rinse, good thorough rinse. We're gonna do the tires, rims. We'll do a good thorough rinse. We're gonna foam it up. Um, after that, we're gonna let the foam hit it, pull everything down, rinse it off, hit it with the uh, fallout remover, let that do its thing, since there's probably very, very little contamination on there. Then we're gonna rinse off the fallout remover, foam it up one more time, and then uh, get it uh, get it nice lathered up. You can do the wash, and then rinse it off, and then we're gonna dry it, and then we're gonna hit it with the uh, hit it with a graphene, or give it a quick one-step polish, and then we're gonna put the graphene uh, coating on it. How long should this job take? Cause it seems like you're doing a lot. I'm pro I'm gonna try to knock it out in under two hours, about two hours. Yeah, it's a small vehicle. We're not going for paint perfection, you know. Um, 
I'm gonna show you guys a couple, couple little shortcuts here and there to where you can do it fast and effectively. I'm already set up. As you can see, I have everything that I need out. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get started. I just need to start up, start up the generator and the uh, pressure washer and, and get, and get to it. Good. We have a number. So I have an upgrade now. Remember the last time we, uh, the last, probably for the last two years, I've been using the pump sprayers for my drying aid. Um, one of my foam cannons was acting up. So what I did was I bought another foam cannon. I repaired the old one. And uh, now I use the drying aid in the second foam cannon. First foam cannon is soap. The second one is the drying aid. Cuts my time off even more. So. Any efficiency that saves you, even if it's two minutes, five minutes, five minutes, you know, you got three cars that you're doing, five minutes off of each car is 15 minutes. Time is money. So this one, we're gonna just let it drain off while we work on the tires. Then we're gonna give it a rinse and then we're gonna hit it with the iron remover. Hey Joe, what's that you spray, man? So this is a fallout remover. It's an iron uh, iron remover. So this is gonna this is gonna activate and turn purple upon any um, contact with any kind of embedded contaminant or uh, any kind of industrial fallout. All right. So it doesn't look like there's really anything activating. So that's a good sign. That's a very good sign. See, there's some here that are kind of little tiny purple speck. There's there's really hardly anything on here. It might be a newer paint job. See a couple, some purple here coming out. Mm. Like those little tiny, those are just little contaminants that are in there. And this is just gonna help break them down and pull them out of this paint surface. Sometimes you'll do a white car and you'll spray that on it and the whole thing will just be purple, you mm. know, because it's, it's full of contamination. This doesn't replace claying a vehicle, but it's a good alternative if you're doing a one step or it doesn't really need it. Um, it's a good, it's a good alternative to have. I try to use clay. In my opinion, I think you should try to use clay as little as possible because what clay does is it mars the surface of the, of the vehicle. I heard that. Yeah, because you're actually you're using friction on the surface of the paint to remove the embedded contaminants. So if I'm using a clay bar and I'm claying the surface of the paint, whatever contaminants are coming up into that clay bar, it's sticking to the clay bar, pulling out of the surface of the vehicle, the paint sticking inside the clay bar. But as you're moving it back and forth, all those contaminants are within the clay. So you're scratching the vehicle. You're giving, it's called light marring. So, Whenever you clay, you always have to polish after. So um, you can't just clay and then put a, put a sealant on or clay and then put a wax. You can, but you know, some, most of the time I have clients who call and say, oh, I need a clay bar. You don't need a clay bar until you really need a clay bar. You'll know if you need a clay bar, if there's heavy contaminants, if you feel that grit, if you have overspray on your vehicle. There's very few reasons you would need clay bar 
or if you had had paint protection on it for you know quite some time, maybe the whole life of the car. But uh, whenever you clay, you should always be polishing out to refine that paint, so you're not leaving those marring in the. It does leave the paint surface nice and smooth, but a lot of clients will call and say, "Oh, I need a clay and I need a clay and wax or a clay," but. They're not really understanding what the clay is doing, the benefits of the clay. I think a lot of people assume that the clay is gonna make it shine. It does help it shine after you polish because you no longer have contaminants on that clear coat. So obviously it's not gonna refract as much light and you're gonna get that pure, you know, that, that just, the, just the paint surface and the metallics and you get, um, you know, going through the clear coat and then reflecting back at you. But you have contaminants that kind of blocks that so you don't get as much shine and, and vibrance out of the color but you do still need to polish and refine that's where you get those results that are in, that are just like shine So remember you said uh, it's a lot that we're gonna do. Yeah. So we're already done with the wash. We're done with the decontamination. Uh, we're done with the full exterior, except all we have to do now on the exterior is uh, is is do the polish. Or actually, we're, we've already done the we did the wash. We did the decontamination. We did the air dry. We're doing the towel dry now. We're gonna do the paint surface prep. Uh, we're gonna polish it out first. Then we're gonna do the paint surface prep after the paint surface prep we're going to apply the graphene spray coating and then the dressing and that'll be a wrap applying that what is it called this is a graphene ceramic spray coating so graphene is going to be the new generation of ceramic so graphene is <clears throat> most uh, most ceramic coatings are 9h hardness that's what they're based off of the the scale of hardness um, and the graphene is most ceramics are 9H. Graphene's usually about 10H. That's coming out for pro. This one is not going to be rated at that. This is the spray coating. So this one's not going to last as long. It is going to be effective. It's going to have great water beating, great shine. Um, this actually is the closest spray coating of any kind of ceramic or graphene that actually flashes and has the characteristics close to the actual pro coatings themselves. So um, it's very user friendly. Of course, you have to prep the paint surface properly in order to get the best results from it. But um, we've already polished, prepped this car. Uh, so now we're gonna apply this coating and it's, uh, it's an easy wipe on, wipe off. You know, we'll, you'll, you'll check it out. And if there's any mistakes that you make, all you do, what's great about this one is you just reapply it and you're able to kind of fix it up any high spots or um, anything like that that, you know, just, just so I understand, that's ceramic coating. Yes, this is a ceramic coating. By spray. It's a spray. The yes. The other option is using the DA. Yeah, right? no, this is the other option. Oh. So here's a ceramic coating. This one's by PNS. This is PNS Legend, and then this is a graphene spray coating. They make, they make ceramic coatings in spray also. This one is a graphene. A graphene is is a, the newest um, technology out there for for paint protection. So this stuff is supposed to be much stronger, more durable, and last a lot longer than this. The Pro, um, this guy here, they say about five years. The, the 
the graphene version of the pro stuff, which I have at home, I'm not doing on this vehicle, um, they say will last seven years from the manufacturer. So uh, depending on how it's applied, how the car's prepped, how it's maintained, um, these guys, the graphene is supposedly gonna last a lot longer, but only time will tell, we'll see. I love the quality of this graphene spray coating. I use it on all my maintenance vehicles to make it easier when I wash them. So it takes a little bit more time up front, but on their first detail that I do, I charge full price for any kind of maintenance that, that's gonna go forward. So what I do is I apply this. So as soon as I wash the car, the water beating is happening quickly. It's, it's making my job so much easier for my maintenance clients. So I have it on this surface, on this portion. So I'm just gonna do this section here. Oh, you spray on the towel. Yeah, I spray it on the towel. So you're gonna apply it just like a traditional ceramic coating. And this one's a lot, a lot more user friendly. Um, the pro coatings, if you, you know, you have to make sure that you time it to where you're removing it within a minute, depending on the temperature, you know, um, outside or if you're doing it inside. But this is perfect conditions for, for applying it right now. And these towels that I use are they're throwaway towels, so I buy them with the purpose of tossing them after because the coating actually hardens so this towel will not be won't be able to use it all right guys once again this is joel from details right here we just finished up the Datsun 510 with the full exterior detail polish and graphene coating uh, remember like subscribe and share on our YouTube page and go to our Instagram page to check us out for more at Details Auto.